as long as sculpture remained tied to its traditional techniques of carving and modeling, it was bound by the shape and the weight of the block or the structural possibilities of an armature. The revolution which ruptured the traditional concepts of sculpture originated abroad with the constructivists in Europe who demonstrated that sculpture could be built directly out of unconventional materials such as metal, plastics, and wire using modern technical methods such as welding and soldering. Ibram Lassau, one of America's first abstract sculptors, was best known for his open space welded sculptures of bronze, silver, copper, and steel. He was one of the founding members of the American Abstract Artist Group and served as president of the group from 1946 until 1949. In 1953, Philip Johnson commissioned Lassau to produce a relief sculpture that would hang over the guest room bed in the brick house, one of the few site-specific works at the glass house. Lassau's Clouds of Magellan seen here is an intricate open work maze consisting of a network of rectangular boxes rendered in thick and thin knobby lines of bronze and steel that extend not only across the room but out into the space of the room. One of the few native New Yorkers in the New York School, Seymour Lipton trained as a dentist, but focused on sculpture from 1932. His early choices of medium changed from wood to lead and then to bronze, and he's best known for his work in metal. He made several technical innovations, including brazing nickel-silver rods onto sheets of Monel to create rust-resistant forms. Like others of his generation, Alexander Calder and David Smith, for example, Lipton recognized that metal sculptures had more resonance in the machine age. He started bronze casting in 1940-41, but after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, the use of metal was restricted to the war effort, so Lipton worked intermittently with sheets of scrap metal. The sensibility of Ferber's earlier sculpture has much in common with the work of both Lipton and Lassau. In 1944, he began working in welded metal, allowing for a lighter and more open, calligraphic formal vocabulary, which led to his signature style. By the mid-1950s, he began to create what he called roofed sculptures, some parts of which hung from the ceiling while other parts rose from the floor. These were followed by so-called cage works, large boxy forms within which other forms were set. David Smith is considered one of the pioneers of metal sculpture. He started by making 3D objects from wood, wire, coral, soldered metal, and other found materials, but soon graduated to using an acetylene torch to weld metal heads, which are probably the first welded metal sculptures ever made in the U.S. During World War II, Smith worked as a welder for the American Locomotive Company, assembling locomotives and M7 tanks. After the war, with the additional skills that he'd acquired, he released his pent-up energy and ideas in a burst of creation between 1945 and 46. His output soared, and he went about perfecting his very own personal symbolism. Home of the Welder was made shortly after the Second World War and reflects Smith's personal circumstances. Like a coded autobiography, the various elements in the sculpture relate to his dreams and frustrations at the time. The millstone, for example, was identified by Smith as representing his job, while images of women and children may reflect tensions in his childless first marriage. Smith was awarded the prestigious Guggenheim Fellowship in 1950, which was renewed again the following year. Freed from financial constraints, he made more and larger pieces, and for the first time was able to afford to make whole sculptures of stainless steel. At the time of its completion, Australia was Smith's largest sculpture. By welding together thin rods and plates of steel, he created a work that's simultaneously delicate and strong, a masterpiece of tension, balance, and form that he described as drawing in space. The scale of his works continued to increase. Tank Totem 3 of 1953 is 7 feet tall. He 
Beginning in the 1950s, Smith explored the technique of burnishing his stainless steel sculptures with a sander, a technique that would find its fullest expression in his QB series in the 1960s. Becca was made at the height of Smith's career in 1965, the year he died in a car accident. Even though his life was cut short, the artist's output was prodigious, and his many innovations were unparalleled. His legacy of influence is unmatched in American sculpture. Osama Noguchi was born in Los Angeles, the illegitimate son of a Japanese poet and an American writer. Educated in the U.S., Noguchi expanded his artistic horizons with time spent in Paris and Asia, finally settling in Greenwich Village in the 1940s. Noguchi's sculpture drew from the ongoing Surrealist movement, and works included various mixed-media construction and a series of biomorphic sculptures made of interlocking slabs. The most famous of these assembled slab works, Koros, was first shown in September 1946, helping to cement his place in the New York art scene. In 1947, Noguchi began a collaboration with the Herman Miller Company when he joined with George Nelson, Paul Laszlo, and Charles Ames to produce a catalog containing what's often considered to be the most influential body of modern furniture ever produced, including the iconic Noguchi table, which remains in production today. Noguchi is also known for his abstract sculptures designed as adjuncts to architecture. An example of his environmental work is this massive red cube designed for the Marine Midland Bank building in New York City. In post-war sculpture, artists such as Isamu Noguchi approached conventional materials like wood and stone with a new eye while other sculptors such as Ephraim Lassau and David Smith developed new techniques to work with modern industrial materials. 